Welcome to another video from ultimateged.com. In this video, we will be looking at some common GED math questions. Please, it's important you try all the questions. You can also get the full course with over 200 step-by-step -step videos covering all the topics you need to pass the GED math test at ultimateged.com. Okay, let's dive in. A pie chart shows the distribution of a student's study time by subject. If the student spends 40% of their time studying math, 30% studying science, 10% studying history, and the rest on other subjects, what percentage of their time is spent on other subjects? A. 5% B. 10% C. 15% D. 20% to solve this question, we need to calculate the percentage of time spent on other subjects. First, we add up the percentages spent on math, science, and history, which is 40% plus 30% plus 10%, resulting in 80%. Now to find the percentage spent on other subjects, we subtract 80% from 100% because the total percentage of study time is 100%. The total percentage in a pie chat is always 100%. This is 20%. So, the answer is D, 20%. The student spends 20% of their time on other subjects. Given the function g of x equals 4x squared minus 3x, what is the value of g of x when x equals 2v? a. 12v squared minus 6v b. 8v squared minus 6v c. 16v squared minus 6v d. 16v squared minus 8v For function questions like this, all our work is to substitute 2v wherever we see an x in our function. Starting with the term 4x squared, when we plug in 2v for x, x squared becomes 2v times 2v, which is 4v squared. Multiplying that by 4 gives us 16v squared. Next, for the term negative 3x, when we substitute 2v for x, we get negative 3 times 2v, which simplifies to negative 6v. Combining these results, g of 2v is 16v squared minus 6v. Therefore, the correct answer is C, 16v squared minus 6v. What is the surface area of the given cone? A, 150.72 centimeters squared. B, 250.32 cm squared C. 301.44 cm squared D. 360.56 cm squared To determine the total surface area of the cone, we'll use the formula pi times radius squared plus pi times radius times slant height. This formula will be given to you on the GED so no need to memorize. From the figure, our radius is 6 cm and slant height is 10 cm. Please be careful about the slant height. You are sometimes given the vertical height, not the slant height. We plug these values into our formula. We calculate pi times 6 squared plus pi times 6 times 10. Pi is 3.14. 6 squared is 36 and 6 times 10 is 60. So we have 3.14 times 36 plus 3.14 times 60. We work this on the calculator to get 113.04 plus 188.4. Summing these up, the total surface area becomes 301.44 square centimeters. Hence, the correct answer is C. 301.44 square centimeters. Which of the following algebraic expressions is represented by 
the product of 7 and a number increased by 5 is 30. A. 7x plus 5 equals 30. B. 7x times 5 equals 30. C. 7 plus 5x equals 30. D. 5x plus 7 equals 30. Let's translate it. The product of 7 and a number. Here, product implies multiplication. If we let a number be represented by a variable, say x, this part of the phrase translates to 7 times x or just 7x. Increased by 5. Increased by implies addition. So we add 5 to it. Is 30. Is in mathematical expressions typically implies equality. So, is 30 means equals 30. Therefore, the correct answer is A. 7x plus 5 equals 30. We have a complete free lesson on translations of expression. Please check it out for more. If a line has a slope of negative 2 over 3, what is the slope of a line that is perpendicular to it? A. Negative 3 over 2. B. 2 over 3. C. Negative 2 over 3. D. 3 over 2. The correct answer is D. 3 over 2. When two lines are perpendicular to each other, their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Reciprocal here simply means flipping the numerator and denominator of the number. So 2 over 3 will be 3 over 2. The negative will simply change the sign. So here, since this is negative 2 over 3, we will have positive 3 over 2. We basically flipped the numbers and changed the sign. There's no need to write plus in front of a number, so the answer is D, 3 over 2. Please check out ultimateged.com for more twists to questions like this. What is the value of x in the diagram below? A, 60. B, 25. C, 75. D, 40. The work here is being able to identify that this is angles on a straight line. Angles on a straight line adds up to 180 degrees. Once you know that, you will just add everything and equate it to 180. Then solve the resulting equation. So here, we will add 75 plus x plus 20 plus 25 equals 180. We can add the number 75 plus 20 plus 25 to get 120. So we have x plus 120 equals 180. We can subtract 120 from both sides. The 120 will cancel out. 180 minus 120 is 60. So x is 60. Therefore, the correct answer is A. 60. Samantha is painting a rectangular mural on a wall. The entire wall is 15 feet long and 10 feet wide. She decides to leave a 2 foot wide unpainted border all around the mural. What is the area of the painted portion of the mural? A. 60 square feet. B. 66 square feet. C. 110 square feet. D. 94 square feet. We looked at a similar question in our September GED 2023 video. That is question 19. We encourage you to watch that video. Find out the similarities and difference with this question and why we used slightly different approach. Okay, let's solve the question. For questions like this, it's a good practice to get a diagram so you can picture what is going on. Here is our wall. This is the painted portion of the mural. That's the area we are finding. We have been given the dimensions of the wall as 15 feet long and 10 feet wide. We are told she left two feet around the mural. Area of a rectangle is its length times width. This formula will be given to you on the GED. We know the length of the wall is 15 feet. Two feet has been subtracted from the left and two feet has been subtracted from the right. 
So the length of the mural will be 15 minus 4, which is 11 feet. The width of the mural is similar. The width of the wall is 10 feet. We subtract 2 feet from the top and 2 feet from the bottom. So we have the width to be 10 minus 4, which is 6 feet. Now that we know the dimensions of the mural, we can find the area. We have area of the mural equals 11 times 6. This is 66. So the area of the painted portion of the mural is B66 square feet. What is the slope of the line represented by the equation y equals negative 3x plus 2? A. Negative 3. B. 3. C. Negative 2. D. 2. The correct answer is A. Negative 3. This is one of the easiest slope questions you'll find on the GED. The equation given is in the slope-intercept form. This is y equals mx plus b. In this form, the coefficient of the x is your slope. Basically, the number with the x is your slope. Since we have negative 3x, negative 3 will be our slope. Let's look at a similar question to this. What is the slope of the line represented by the equation 2y equals 3x plus 6? A. 2 over 3 B. Negative 2 over 3 C. 3 over 2 D. Negative 3 over 2 The correct answer is C. 3 over 2 This is similar to the previous question, but you have to be careful. This equation is not in the slope-intercept form. For it to be in the slope-intercept form, we want the y to be by itself. We can achieve that by dividing through by 2. The 2 will cancel out. 6 over 2 is 3. So we have y equals 3 over 2x plus 3. Now, this is in the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. y equals mx plus b. We said in this form, the number with the x is our slope. So our slope is 3 over 2. What is the slope of the line below? A. 1 B. Negative 1 C. Negative 2 D. 2 The correct answer is B. Negative 1 The slope of a line is the change in Y over the change in X. We know that the change in Y simply means how many points you are going up or down. If you are going up, then you have a positive change. If you are going down, then you have a negative change. The change in x simply means how many points you are going to the right or left. If you are going to the right, then you have a positive change. If you are going to the left, then you have a negative change. Let's look at our question. Our first step will be to choose any two points on the line. I am choosing these two points. Let's call it A and B. You can choose any two points on the line. However, it is important to choose points that will make your work easier. Choose points whose X and Y values can be easily determined. Normally, points at the corners are best. Now to find the slope, all we are doing is moving from one point of the line to the other on the slope triangle. Let's move from B to A. We moved down two points. Notice moving down is negative. So we have negative two here. Then we will move to the right two points to get to A. Notice that moving to the right is positive. We have two here. Negative two over positive two is negative one. So our slope is negative one. Notice that our first movement is always change in Y. That is moving up or down then our second movement is change in x. That is moving left or right. There are other ways we could have moved to get the same results. Check our other GED videos for more. We will end this video here. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to get the full course at ultimateged.com.